Hi, listener. Welcome to the More Than Me podcast with your host, Becky Harrington, sharing stories of women who decided to move outside of themselves and claim a higher purpose because together we are more. In each episode, we'll dig deep into stories of women who shed their fear and shame so that they could claim their higher purpose. Each week, you'll leave inspired, free from the shoulds that have been bringing you down and prepared to walk ahead towards your bright purpose. Experience a community that has forged a path before you and discover that you're not alone. Well, welcome listeners. This is episode three, um, and I am super excited to have you here today. Um, This is the More Than Me podcast. I'm your host, Becky Harrington. Um, Each week, please join us as we discover the triumphant stories of women who decided to have more for their lives and accept their purpose. This is a podcast for women who are having a deep longing in their hearts that crave community and are ready to step out in their faith. So today I'm going to be joined with Elizabeth de Moraes, a beautiful woman who is on fire. She has so much going on. She recently did a very brave thing of stepping out and being a contestant for a charity event, um, a dancing with the stars kind of thing. She's going to be talking more about that today. She's a it. She won it. <laughs> uh, she's a Shark Tank contestant. She's a business coach. She's a Jesus lover. Um, she's the founder of the Video Glam Cam Kit, and she's going to be sharing the story behind that today. Um, I'm exhausted. Did I leave anything out? I'm sure she has more to tell us about. So Elizabeth, please say hello to our listeners. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today on this. This is such an honor and I'm super excited to share my story, see how I can help, um, you know, inspire anyone to really step into their greatness as well, which is what all what you're doing here as well. So thank you so much. So Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about, um, well, let's start with your glam cam kit. Okay. Tell us a little bit about how that all came about. And I know that that's what you brought onto Shark Tank. So there's a story there. Tell us about that. Let me, let me correct first in terms of Shark Tank. I haven't gotten on there yet. Hmm. I did audition. So, and that is the product that I took to audition and we'll see what, how everything transpires. And all I can say is, if I know something, I can't say. If I don't know something, I can't say. So as of the, after the audition, we couldn't, we can't say anything else. So okay. I really don't have anything that I can, can share, but we're, we're still proud of you that you auditioned. Like we think you. that's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was, it was a big leap of faith. It was something that I wasn't going to do. And excuse me, I just need to get a tissue real quick. My nose, early morning. <laughs> um, the, um, it was something that I was like, ah, it's a distraction if I go to this audition. And I just decided that, you know, like, why not? Why? I I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Let me put myself out there. And so this has been my, my MO lately. And what I love helping other women do as well is just like, step into your greatness, step in, you know, stop putting these barriers in, in front of yourself. Um, and just go and do what you're supposed to go do. If God has given you an idea, go run with it. And that, that leads into how this whole video glam cam kit was created to answer your question. Um, the, just so you know what, what it is actually, it's, it takes the guesswork out of creating your video. So, so many people are like, Oh no, I really would love to get onto video, but I don't know how to do, you know, what kind of equipment to get. I don't know about framing or sound or anything, you know, background. I don't know anything about that. So then they just automatically, they don't do it. When really there are other issues that are stopping them, <laughs> that they're really being visible, but there, there's that, that, that one trip up point of like, what do I use? How can I use it? And so that's what the Video Glam Cam Kit does. It has a light, an amazing light, two microphones, uh, a selfie stick that holds any size phone and a, and a tablet and a tripod all in a bag. Um, and there are other little treats in there as well. Um, but it's just a nice, easy way to then be able to do your videos. It's your tool to get out and be visible. So a little over a year ago, I was in a mastermind coaching mastermind and my coach said, Hey, have you ever thought about creating a product? And I'd always had something in the back of my mind that I would create something, but I never had, I was like, 
no, <laughs> I haven't created anything. Um, we were all coaches in that room. And so, you know, it's like we, our focus usually is on, you know, serving rather than an actual product. So my initial thought was, you know, am I going to make a mug? Am I going to make a journal? You know, that type of thing. And she said, you know, just go into meditation or prayer, whichever works, you know, for you and, uh, and just ask. And so I went into prayer and I asked God, I said, what are we going to create for who? And then, and then what issue or problem is it going to solve? And so I just sat there in prayer, just listened. And this is something that I really, um, I'm, I'm adamant about people really getting in tune with those little God whispers, those little things that it signs everything like, and be open to listening and then taking quick action. So many, how, how many times have you, or any of our audience members that are, are watching this, you know, how many times have you had an idea, say maybe, maybe in the middle of the night and you're like, Oh my gosh, it'd be amazing. And I could do this and this and this and this. And you wake up in the morning and you go, that was stupid. Right. <laughs> like, I know I've done that so many times. It's like, how the heck am I going to make that happen? The thing is, is that idea was given to you to go do something with. And if you don't do something with it, it's going to go to someone else and they're going to do it. Right. I, I, I also think that in general, we don't always think that the Holy Spirit cares about stuff like that. Like we, we go right. to the Holy Spirit when our friends are in need or when we have, you know, illness in the situation or when our kids are acting out or when we feel out of our right. depth. But we don't always think about going to the Holy Spirit for our businesses and for mm -hmm. asking for abundant things um, yeah. that are above and beyond what we need. Um, so and what he wants us to have and what he wants us to have. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. I love that one. It's so risky, right? Because you mm -hmm. might you might get it wrong or like you yeah. might you might hear it wrong. Um, but it doesn't really matter because I think he just loves that posture so much. Mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. he loves that dependent posture. So definitely. What a great story. Yeah. Well, we it are. Just, it came, I mean, the idea came instantly and I knew yeah. what I needed to do. And I was like, okay, this is mine to take because we're going to go create this together. And let me just interject real quick something. I feel like he's taking me someplace. I don't know where it is yet. I mean, I've got, I've got, and this is everyone has dreams and goals that he's planted in our hearts that we are meant to go and do. So if you have anything that's in your, in your heart that you're like, Oh, these big goals and these big dreams, he's planted them there, but you don't know how they're going to happen. And so I feel that like this kit is something that is a tool to help so many people, but he's taking me on a journey that it, the, the tool is a vehicle, but that's not the end. Mm -hmm to get there. So it's really interesting how if you just follow, you listen and you take instant action without doubt, it'll happen. Like I created the kit, the thought, the idea came, I was shipping them within six weeks. Never created a product. So if you just take the idea and go, just go do it. Love it. Um, it was a total so, divine download. So Elizabeth and I are, we have not met in person. Mm -hmm. So we were connected just a few days ago. Um, over email. This is the first time we're kind of face to face together over video. Um, but we are going to see each other in person yes. in Dallas. And uh, we want to talk about um, having you come there. Part of More Than Me is moving outside of our technology. Mm -hmm. um, most of the women that I have met through here started out with an Instagram post and a connection and a, a little heart button and then a comment and then a message and, right. and Hey, do you want to talk on the phone? Um, but the magic of what happens at more than me and the magic that, that can happen for you is in person. So we want to mm -hmm. talk to you about joining us in Dallas. Elizabeth and I are going to both be there. Most yes. of the women that you've heard from on this podcast are going to be sharing and speaking. Um, and this is, this is a give and get community. So it's not just about sitting back and watching what we're doing. It's about coming in and participating. So if you can't make it to Dallas, um, it's coming up on March 23rd. Go to the More Than Me website, click on the events page. If you can't make Dallas, there's going to be more events added every single um, month. We're going to be, um, we're looking at Charlotte in May. We're going to have a full schedule in the fall. Make it a priority this year that you're going to come and see us in person. Mm -hmm, until then, until <laughs> then, we have a member program. We actually are going to be on a call right after this recording. 
Um, and so if every month we get on Zoom calls with all of our members. Elizabeth was actually um, the coach who led our last one and she gave such incredible insights into what it looks like to intuitively grow your business and intuitively follow your heart. Um, we're bringing in experts and leaders that can help guide you towards your passion and purpose. We're connecting you in community where you can collaborate together. So please join our member program. Um, this is all about your participation. So there's tons of things you get. The website lists all the features, but the real benefit is your participation and what you have to give back to this community as well. You have gifts and talents and we want you to join us. Okay, can I say so can I say something yeah. about a fear that might come up for a lot of women? A lot of women are fearful of joining groups of other women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from different experiences we've had in high school or even as adults and sororities, whatever, that, often groups can be pretty mean, <laughs> right? And so there might be a hesitation to join something like this, but I have to say I am one, that's not how, you know, Tiffany would ever run a, um, a, a group, but I just, when I, when I came on to the call, um, you know, the, the, the other training that I did, I was just so, I mean, my heart was so full of such gratitude and joy because every single one of these women are so supportive. They want the best for each and every one who's joined. And so if you're if in our in our audience today, if you're sensing like, oh no, not another women's group, let go of that fear and, and step into it because you will be amazed at the results that, you know, the group and the friendships that come from it. There's a there's a complete willingness um, for giving in abundance mm -hmm. in this community. And also there's a really deep sense of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Even on your call, I was just so impressed with some of the, the, the women who were there mm -hmm. who were sharing like really deep business struggles in front of all these other women without any qualm. Mm -hmm. And, and in my mind, I thought, wow, this is a safe place, right? Totally. Totally. And that's a miracle today. Mm -hmm. Just like you're saying, like the mean girls thing has gotten so bad. And so when you see a, when you witness a, a group of women where it's safe to be totally naked and vulnerable and where you feel like everyone's in there for you, it's like celebrating it, you is did the kingdom of heaven just come down on <laughs> right. earth? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that is our shameless promotion. We'll stop. Yes. <laughs> Um, all right. So, well, I gained nothing from it financially or anything. So you yeah, know, neither do like, I. We're all volunteers <laughs> here. If you think that we're we're gaining in some way, we're no, not. no, no. It's all about serving. So, uh, so um, welcome uh, to our the meat of our discussion today. Elizabeth um, had just such a unique experience. We kind of teased it a little bit. She was a dancer for many years. She stopped dancing for many years, and she took a risk to huge um, a huge risk <laughs> it felt like it <laughs> she decided to go on this charity event which was a dancing with the stars theme and she had to put a lot of training into it and she took it really seriously um and so tell us a little bit about how, what it was like um to join the show what was going through your heart and your mind and what actually why did you do it in the first place well, I wanted to serve the community. That was first and foremost, right? Um, it's a local Rotary Club who does this annual event called Dancing for the Stars. And it's the same concept as the show. Um, it feels just as big when you're entering it. Um, they they um, partner local celebrities. I don't know if I call myself a local celebrity, but you know, business business leaders in the community with professional dancers. And I was like, Somebody asked me, they said, why don't you do this? This would be great for your business. And you used to be a dancer. So why not? I was like, okay, I guess I'm, it's one of those God whispers, you know, another like angel messenger. I was like, okay, let me step into this. And so I was super excited about it, but also very hesitant because I hadn't, I used to be a professional dancer, hadn't performed in almost 15 years. And so there, with that comes a lot of weight in terms of, oh my gosh, if I'm, I'm stepping back into this, what if I'm not as good as I used to be? Or there's a lot of like, you know, baggage on me that um, I'm going to have to reveal to myself and to, you know, very publicly, like I got to get, get working, you know, or just walk away from it. And so I said, you know, I committed to it. So I was like, okay, I've got, I've, 
you know, to, to everyone, I've got to do this. And so um, the thing is, is that just, let's see, just three months before I was in my mastermind, a different mastermind. I love masterminds. Like if you don't have a coach, you always need to have a coach, everybody. <laughs> it helps you so much. And it, it was revealed that I hadn't danced in a long time, but that I so desired. It was like to do so. Like it was this thing of, well, this is the one thing dancing is what connects me most to God. It's where I feel I can communicate with him and then bring that out into, into the world. And I hadn't been doing it. And with that though, I felt so you know empowered and everyone who's in my circle currently never saw that part of me, which was very frustrating. And so, you know, our viewers might be like, yeah, there's something in me that no one knows about, but if they just knew, they know who I am fully. Right. And, but then there's this fear of putting yourself out there. So they, in, in this mastermind, they said, okay, well tonight after dinner, we're going to push all the, you know, the tables and chairs away and you're going to perform for us. And I was like, Oh, there's this push of like, I so want to do this, but I'm terrified. I don't want to, you know? And I was like, are you serious? Okay. And, and, and my coach was like, Hey, I bet you, I know you're, you're, you're hesitant to do this, but I bet you know exactly what you're going to wear and what music you're going to use. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you know? So it, I danced that night. It was awesome. I just improvised for four minutes or so and it felt so good. And then it, we, my committed, committed to go and dance, continue dancing. Well, it didn't really happen because I didn't have anything holding me accountable. Yes, my group would hold me accountable, but there wasn't like this date that would hold me accountable. So a few months later, I started this, the Dancing for the Stars event, and I, it was the one thing that then held me there because there were, through the process, there was a lot of frustration because my body wasn't responding to how I wanted it to do, to be. I couldn't, I couldn't express, like my, my mind and my body or my soul and my body were like separate. Like the body was like, come on, I know you can do this, um, but you're not responding. And so the thing is, had I not committed to it, I may have let life get, get in the way and get busy and not, not, not continue my lessons. So it's really important that if we want to make that transformation or, you know, continuing some, continue committing ourselves to something that really is our essence that can so easily be put on the back burner, set a date for something, put a goal that you're working towards. And so with that, I just, I gained so much more confidence and got to then really finally get back into my body. But the thing is, is that when I first started, I put a jacket around my waist. Did you, you want me to talk, talk about this? Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is actually going to become my, the title of my next book. And someday, if not if, when I do a TED talk, it'll be the title of that, uh, is, you know, just take off that jacket or take that jacket off your butt because I wrap this jacket around my waist and here I am, you know, I help people become very visible on video and, and the like. And here I am being very visible, videoing my dances saying, Hey, here I'm promoting the event. And my coach was like, Hey, why do you have a jacket wrapped around your waist? And I thought, because I was hot, I took it off and put it around my waist. You know, like I could have just as easily put it you know, against the wall. Right. And he said, no, 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 no. Why are you putting it around your waist? And I said, to hide my butt. He's like, exactly. Everyone has a butt. You have a butt. Why are you hiding it? Take that thing off. And I was like, okay. So how many times do we put things on that cover us out of habit because we're trying to hide something? Mm -hmm. And the, when I did that, it changed everything for me because I had to confront me, you know, my body. I also then had to go, Oh, it's not so bad. <laughs> right. But it also freed me up to move more, to really dive deeply into the movement, into what I was expressing, what this was all about. And it just totally like ripped, ripped in a good way, ripped me open to just be me rather than trying to hide things. We spend so much time hiding, like what we might be embarrassed about or feel shameful about, or that we might be wrong or it might be too much. We don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to rock the boat or make the mean girls <laughs> attack us. So we spend so much time like, you know, trying to stay together. But when we let that go and we just let ourselves be ourselves, 
that's when our true essence, that's when our, you know, the, our God light comes out um, in a sense, you know, to show we become the vessel of God rather than trying to hold it all together. And it changed, it's, it's transformed everything in my life simply because I took that jacket off. Elizabeth, um, have you always been like this? Like, what? like you, are, <laughs> you are the kind of person who is so audacious in the way that you take risks and you don't tell yourself that, oh, maybe I'll do something or I would love to. You say, I am going to do this. And you take, um, you put yourself out in a way that that could, you could fail. Um, oh, yeah. you, could, you could be embarrassed. You could be wrong. Have you been like this since you were a little girl? No, <laughs> not at all. This is something pretty new. Um, I've always put myself out there in terms of performing really, you know, working towards being a high, I did not that I put it out there to say, Hey, I'm going to be a high achiever, but I was always a high achiever, but there was always, always, since I was a little girl, there was always a hesitation of fully pulling myself out there. Like I would go and I would do the dances. I was, I would compete. I would become, you know, the leaders in my, in different organizations that I'd be in. But there was always this hesitation. this always this fear of really putting myself out there. So I'd put myself out there like I did in the, in, in these initial dance classes, but there was always this hesitation, this shell, this protection, this armor that I still held on to because I was fearful of retribution or, or what have you, as I mentioned <coughs> earlier, <clears throat> excuse me. And so that always, that, that was, you know, I knew what the truth was, you know, and it was this, this pulling down of me that uh, I wasn't fully living my life and my purpose. And it's really since that taking that jacket off where I'm like, you know what, I don't, I'm almost 48 this in two weeks, I'm 48. Like there, that's not old, but it's like, oh, I got lots to do before, <laughs> before I go see him, you know? So, um, I, <clears throat> there's, I, I just got so sick and tired of hit living my life halfway yeah. and still, you know, hearing, hearing God say, Hey, you need to go do this. Oh no, that's not for me. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Or those are such audacious goals. Like that's just that's just me being, you know, uh, unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And, but if those, like I said earlier, if those goals and those dreams have been placed in you, then go for it, you know? And so, yes, I might be proven wrong or, or I might make mistakes. We're doing that anyway, right? We still make mistakes no matter if we're doing it full out or not. Mm -hmm. And I realized like with the taking the jacket off, is that that's when if you if you just put it all out there then you know exactly where you are and what you then need to work on um if you try to like connive, connive it i said <laughs> somewhere i don't know <laughs> um and only put out certain things that you think people will like and that's safe and it's pretty but then it's boring um you don't know what you're dealing with and you can't get better yeah and it's like now i'm just having a blast mm -hmm. where i've realized I, it's my rule now if I hear an idea and it's, I, I mean, it's your intuition, but it's, I think it's a message from God. Like you mentioned earlier, my training was about, you know, intuitively letting, you know, letting your intuition guide your business in your life is I, you're so connected then. And if you take the action, he's right there taking care of you. Mm -hmm. And so if you do make mistakes, then great. You're human. And that's what I've learned too. I spent so much time trying to like mold this image to be inspirational and all, but then nobody can access you because you're not, you're, you're too perfect. Oh, I'm, I can't get there. So <laughs> have fun, Elizabeth. It's like, you gotta, you, it's okay to make mistakes. For many years. I, I mean, so when I was in high school, I was like ASB vice president president of the speech and debate team gave my high school graduation speech and I'm a Southern California girl. So that was like 4,000 people in the audience. Right. Um, I lived my life that way, you know, mm -hmm. varsity water polo and swim. And I was Miss Active. and over time, uh, failures, you know, I started a business in my twenties and that grew to a certain size and then totally tanked. Mm. <laughs> um, I, had lots of uh, just, you know, 
people who said things, you know, it happens, I think from an early age, you just start getting negative things spoken yeah. over you and you yeah. have and a you little believing them. Yep. And you have and some acting. gusto in your twenties to fight back. But then mm -hmm. over time you're like, you know, I'm just going to quiet myself down. Um, totally. Oh, you're giving me chills. Cause this is what I help <laughs> people through. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what, it wasn't until I was, um, working in publishing and it was actually when I was asked to start podcasting mm. uh, and I'm a go-getter and I, I was known for, Hey, if there's something that needs to get done, Becky will be the one to do it. And so mm -hmm. they were like, we're going to get into podcasting. And my, my initial thought was great. I'll be the producer from behind the scenes. I'll find people to host. I'll, I'll get every, I'll, I'll set it all up. I'll learn all the yeah, technology. You know how to do all that, right? Yep. And I will be behind the scenes. And we were into our second episode, um, brainstorm and the co-hosts that I was working with were like, these are all your ideas. And if you're not going to be on the show, then th it just doesn't seem right. And I had to step out. I remember like wanting to vomit that morning. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, <laughs> but I bet you wanted to be there. I did want to be there. <laughs> See, uh, I did want to be there. And you know, I showed up and I didn't throw up. And then I did the tagline. <laughs> I showed up and I, I showed didn't up and did throw up. <laughs> um, but you know what? I lost a decade of my life, Elizabeth. I lost a decade of my life. I, I lost knew. 15 years. Yep, I get yep. it. Yep. And so I'm thinking right now just about the people who are listening to us right now, and you're in your lost decade. You're in your lost moment. Um, hopefully you don't let it be as long as Elizabeth. Did you say you're lost or you're last? My lost. Okay. I thought you said you're in your last decade. Lost decade. Suck it up. Go. <laughs> um, so what, what yeah. do you many, say? To, many, go ahead. What, what do you say to people who are, who are in that moment where they're just, they're hiding. They're, they're like, you know, I'm going to be like Jonah and the whale. Mm -hmm. I know God called me to do this, but I'm going to stay in my whale here. It's much mm -hmm. more comfortable. Um, what do you say to people who are in those moments? Well, sometimes I think we also get lulled into thinking that we have to be res like, do the responsible thing. Like, you know, I'm, it's time to be a mom, love being a mom, you know, and, and one, there's, the, there's, there's such beauty in that, but then one can get lulled into, this is what happened to me. There's twofold. It's twofold. I got lulled into, well, I need to focus on the family right now. Um, you know, help bring up these children. We have two girls and it's, you then in the midst of it go, wait, where, where am I? Right. And I realize this is one of my motivating forces is that um, with the two girls, like, I don't want to teach them. I don't want to show them that, yeah, you go and live your life. You then have kids, you devote your entire life to your kids. You let go of all your dreams and your goals. Okay, girls go do the same thing. <laughs> Like, no, I want to show them that one can have, really, one can have it all. There's no, there's no, there's no truth in having a balanced life because balance is, is not real. There's, there's always a constant readjustment, but you can have it all just at different times, right? And so there's that lulling into, okay, well, now we live in the suburbs. We have, we bought a house, we've got kids and I'm focused in on them. There's that. But also I think for me, it was a way for me to also not step into my brilliance. Mm -hmm. It was an excuse to not fully just like, you know, like you were like, Oh, well let me, you know, I'll set it all up for you, but not fully being there. Right. I'm still doing it all, but I'm not fully there. Well, I can't do it all because I've got my kids. Like I can't go and rehearse. I can't do this for myself. And so it's super important to realize that it's, you are, you, your human soul, your soul needs to be expressed in whatever, whatever form or fashion it is, whether it's writing or playing music or hosting shows like this or, and, and others, or like for me to go and perform. And like my, I, I see myself being on national TV someday. Like, I don't, I don't know how that's going to happen, but that's what I was talking about with the kid. It's like, I feel like the kid's going to get me into places that, mm -hmm. you know, you just never know. But you just have to keep leaning in and listen and, and go because that's where you're going to feel most alive. But it's also where you're most cheerful of going. And so just really, if you have it in you, 
follow it. So when we talk about risking with the Holy Spirit and, and your metaphor of kind of hiding your butt, <laughs> <laughs> hiding your butt with a um, tagline of what we're talking is about is, is identity, right? Like who, who am I? It's like the most universal question. It's the, it's the question that drives people um, to bad places and good places, right? So when we hide and when we're not taking risks and we're not fully owning our purpose, it starts to develop an identity. And Mm -hmm. some of that identity is actually a lie. Um, But when we take off the sweatshirt, what happens to our identity? Tell us a little bit about that. Let me tell you something in terms of about the jacket around the butt and in terms of identity is that when my coach called me out on it, um, he said, the first thing that I saw was that jacket. And then he brought his wife, who's also my coach. And he's like, when you watch this, what is the first thing you see? Like, just really honestly, like, what do you see subconsciously first? And then consciously, she's like the jacket. And the thing is, is that whatever we're trying to hide, it's actually what we're like so protective of. And that's, that's running the show that then becomes our identity is the first thing that everyone notices. They didn't, they may not know like totally what it is, but there's a sense of like, there's something that, that's not authentic here. And so that becomes your identity. And that's then how people then respond to you. Whereas taking it off, yes, there's a huge amount of vulnerability, but at the same time, and I'll get, I'll get teary eyed here. Um, in that vulnerability become comes so much empowerment because you just, in a sense, you're laying yourself at the feet of Christ going, this is who I am. What are we going to do with this? Yeah. You know, and then you, you, you have to then be strong to go. I don't care what other people think or say or do if I'm following what I'm supposed to be following and just be who I am, express the gorgeousness that can come from it and keep pushing that then you're living your life of purpose. And if and we, that becomes your identity. If we believe that God said that I made you perfectly the way you are and that I already knew that you were going to be the person that you are right now mm-hmm. and that that was going to be enough for me. If we truly believe that, then we can't believe that anything about us is actually wrong right? Correct. Correct. So, and, any, and if any, anyone that says the opposite, it's really one, it's none of your business, what they think or say, right? And two, it's, it has something to do with them, not you. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen Rachel Hollis's documentary. Not yet. I keep hearing oh about gosh. it. So I, I watched it this weekend and there was a very arresting part of it. She's at this event and she has a checklist that she's asked women to fill out. And there's a bunch of questions and they're questions that are really hard. Like, do you think these things about yourself and and check them? And and you can see women are kind of like hiding their papers because they're sitting next to people. They don't really want people to see what they're checking. And she asked, there was one question and it was, do you hate the way that you look? Not, do, is there something about yourself that you don't like? Do or hate? it was, do you hate the way you look? <clears throat> and she asked everyone to stand up who had checked that on her paper. There was about 800 women in the room and about 700 stood up. That, yeah. I, I was like arrested. Um, mm-hmm. And she, she just started crying on the stage. I think that she expected a lot of women um, to stand up. Women. I don't think she she expected that the majority of the room would say that they hate the way they look. Um, and that's a form of hiding. And I, and I think it's that negative, how do we step out of these negative thoughts that we have about ourselves and walk away from them altogether and believe today that I am in the right place to own my dreams. And, and even if that's just one step, right. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just taking the jacket off, you weren't going to win by just taking the jacket off. You had a lot of work. work. Yeah. But then, but then because I took it off and I knew what to work on. And Mm -hmm. so that's, and that's the thing is that if you are hating on yourself or whatever you're holding back on, you've got to start loving what you have. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, and, and, and loving what you are, what you stand for. Cause how many times, I mean, it's so easy for us to just negate 
anything. Even if someone compliments you, oh, oh, thanks. Not I mean, you may not even say thanks. Like, oh, I love those earrings. Oh, I got them at, you know, I got them at half off at, but you know, or you know, we always like kind of like justify yeah. or, or negate who we are. Love it and go, thank you. And, but say that to yourself too. Like, you know what? I may not like how my hair is, but what part of it do I like? And then how can I make it even more beautiful? Because if we spend so much time hating, then we're not, we're in a sense in victim mode. We're not doing anything about it. Yeah. We just like, we, we, we abdicate our power, right? Whereas if you start loving on yourself, loving like, okay, maybe I'm, I'm not at the weight that I, I would like because one, one, you got to get rid of the, the external, you know, what society thinks. But at the same time, when we're overweight, because I've had major weight issues in the past, when, when we're overweight, we don't like ourselves. We don't feel right. We don't fit in our clothes and all. But if we love on ourselves and go, you know what? It's not where I want it to be, but man, I got a hot body. And then you start, you start thinking how great you are. Oh, you know what? I think I want to put on some red panties and red bra. And you start doing that and it literally starts sloughing off because you're loving what God has gifted you. And it's like you let go of the 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 hatred that's holding on like so for example when I took that jacket off not that I had a bad butt but it wasn't like it, it, and that, that comes from old old conditioning as well when I was overweight like you just have these thoughts like you know you still oh I need to hide it by doing so I saw exactly what was there <laughs> and it naturally changed. Like my butt's a lot better now. And I didn't even consciously work on it, but it was because I loved on it and I just let it, you know, go. It got, it, it, the shape changed. And, and, I, and you know what? She's not, she's not lying. Um, my sister's a registered dietitian and mm -hmm. I asked her once, I, you know, she's got her master's in nutrition. She did her, her, um, she, uh, did her residency residency at San Francisco hospital. She's an excellent, an excellent person in her field. I said, how do you, do women lose weight? And she said, take off all your clothes, stand in front of the mirror and love every inch of what you see. And mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you'll start losing weight. And I yeah. was really expecting a program. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I thought she was going to talk about calorie counting and exactly. she was like, no, no, I, it's, it starts with loving what's already there. And she said, I guarantee you, when you start loving your body, you'll start putting the right things into it and it won't even exactly. be hard. Exactly. And you'll be excited and you'll feel sassy. You'll feel sexy. You'll, yeah. you know, just because of how you change, you know, how you start thinking, which then causes other people around you to start changing your spouse or your partner will start going, Ooh, you're sexy, which then will then like yeah. even motivate you even more. And you then, you know, start feeling great. And so, yeah, definitely. It's, it's about shedding those layers, physically, you know, literally and metaphorically and going, you know what? I love this. I mean, God, God is not going to bless you with anything more until you take care of what you have, right? Yeah. You know, he's not going to expand your territory until you like take care of right now. And yeah. I know that when I had my weight issues, I used them as sabotage for my, you know, ex expanding in my dance career. I'd go up and down, you know, 30 pounds more than this as a dancer. Well, I'd wear these nice, comfy, big, huge sweatshirts. One, nobody could tell, but two, then I had space to expand. But, you know, and I wouldn't even see it because that's just what I'd put on. And then that's what I saw in the mirror. Well, take it off. It's a different story. Yeah. And then start well, loving on it. Elizabeth, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much so for glad. joining us. Thank you. Uh, ladies, if you are... Um, around the Dallas area, or you want to hop on a cheap flight, March is still a great time to mm -hmm. find those. Join us in Dallas. Um, go to our morethanme.com, click on the events page. The event is uh, the 23rd and join us in Dallas. Come meet both yeah. Elizabeth and I, and this is not the kind of event where we're going to be hiding behind a stage, come out then hide again. No, we're going to be we're going to be sitting at your table. Yes. Uh, we're going to get to know you personally. So um, if you can't make it, join the member program. Zoom calls are um, always on the last Thursday of the month. Um, so that's today when we're recording. Um, so join us. We want to see you. We want you to be a part of this. Next week, we'll be joined by Amanda. She is the creator of the Dallas Girl Gang Facebook group. So if you're in Dallas, you should search for the Dallas Girl Gang on Facebook. It's a private group you can join. 
we love them because their hashtag is so in alignment with us. Their hashtag is hashtag you can sit with us. Um, that's going to be episode four. Join us next week. Again, if you love this episode, please go and re- leave a review for us on Google Play or iTunes um, so that we can just continue the amount of women that are listening to this. Again, you can find out more about this movement in more detail on morethanme.com. This is episode three, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.